I am now joined by Lieutenant General D.B. Shikatka, who commanded a corps earlier in the Northeast and now is one of India's leading defense and strategic affairs commentator. General Shikatka, welcome to Northeast Live. Thank you so much. Uh, General Shikatka, you see, there is always this talk of the Chinese building massive infrastructure projects j just across the line of actual control in Arunachal Pradesh. They're building up massive township airstrips. Uh, capable of both civilian and military aircraft. Now, do you think from India's point of view, uh, do you take these developments seriously? And are we far behind? What is the status as far as India is concerned? Uh, firstly, I'm glad your channel is taking up this issue. Short answer in two words. First point, the Chinese have their own long-term view. So the answer is yes. Secondly, you asked me about lagging India lagging far behind. Unfortunately, but it is true, India is lagging behind. Things have started improving in the last four or five years. Now I'll elaborate the things. Right. In the philosophy of war, there is a saying that capacity building takes time. Right. Once your capacity has gone up, improved, your ability goes up. Once your capacity and ability has gone up, your endurance also increases. And then your intentions can change. We have been watching this happening in, along the China border and by the Chinese. Yeah. They have been very carefully, systematically going along the entire Indian front. And now, outskirting even India and going through Pakistan and Myanmar. Uh, Jan Shekatka, uh, the inauguration of the bridge, two strategic bridges, one bridge was inaugurated on Tuesday by the Prime Minister, that is the Bogi Bill Bridge, that has cut time and distance to the Arunachal frontier. In the month of May, another bridge in Sadia uh, was inaugurated again by the Prime Minister. Now, these two strategic bridges over the Brahmaputra, General Shikatka, is, has, is going to allow the movement of troops as well as military hardware to Arunachal Pradesh and from then onwards to the Chinese frontier. How strategic are these two bridges and infrastructure like these, for example? Strategically, these are important, but let us not correlate these only to war. War will take place, and as I said, don't let, but we are now developing our capacity. We are increasing our capacity, which will certainly bound to impact our ability and our endurance. When I was a core commander, I recommended it in writing that there's a requirement of six bridges on Brahmaputra from eastern Assam to western Assam and to Arunachal Pradesh. One has come near Sadia now. The second one is now come up here. One is on way to Tejpur between Nogao. And earlier it used to be when I was a young officer, 62 war, it was only one bridge near Pandutar. We need at least four more bridges. The reason being, it is not only strategic to meet the Chinese threat, it is also to develop Northeast totally. Uh, now, General Shikatka, uh, my, my, my last question to you, only recently, uh, Union uh, Surface Transport Minister, uh, Mr. Nitin Gadkari, had again inaugurated, kicked off rather, a uh, road project worth almost 10,000 crores again in Arunachal Pradesh. So, does it clearly mean now that India is waking up to the reality of building infrastructure along the Chinese frontier? Yes, we have. There is a saying in Hindi, there I do spy. Though you came late, but at least now you've come. This is what told to us by the, the president of Myanmar when we visited them. It is, though it is late, unfortunately, within our own government system, for the last about 30, 40 years, people were shy of developing Northeast. Oh, they used to give the example, oh, Chinese will come. Our philosophy is, you be there on the border. Let the people's interest go. Chinese will never come there. So that because was, then the people that, will uh, Yes, uh, General Sekretka, even now, there is a section, those small of people or analysts, uh, whether serving or otherwise, who might uh, be against this whole idea of taking the road right up to the border. They might uh, think that the Chinese could come. Uh, that is one theory. Do you think uh, that is a redundant theory and that is uh, not worth considering? Yes, sir. That is a redundant theory. And secondly, it is a defeatist attitude, defeated mindset, that if you do this, they will use it. Why? You go there, you be there on the spot, you be there, your people will be there, and let us see how they come. They are not superhuman beings. It is our land, it is our people, the people will turn it. So therefore, that, unfortunately, what has happened, the so-called experts sitting in Delhi in air-conditioned office, 
for last 40 years they are the main cause of this delay in development in north east particularly in the china border particularly. absolutely uh, general shagatka things are moving and let's hope things move in the right direction and we have this infrastructure in place sooner than later general shagatka thank you very much indeed for speaking to thank me you in north thank, so thank you thank you Mr. Jaydev Ranade, welcome to Northeast Live. It's a pleasure to be with you. Mr. Ranade, the Prime Minister on Tuesday uh, inaugurated a bridge over the Brahmaputra uh, that yes. has reduced considerably the time and distance to Arunachal Pradesh and then, of course, to the Chinese frontier. Uh, do you uh, consider it as a massive uh, infra boost vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Chinese infra build-up just across the LSE? Yes, it is certainly a major development. And it puts us in a better position. The bridge has been thought of, I think, many years ago, at least 20, 21 years ago. And it's been constructed now. It's taken a long time. But it has um, uh, reduced the time that the troops will take and that the heavy machinery uh, or the heavy equipment that the army will transport by a lot. So it's a very good development. But it is only one step. There much more has to be done by uh, us to build up a defense infrastructure along the border. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Anade, you know, the Chinese have built uh, in the town of Linzi that, as you, as you know, there are several other towns that the Chinese have built in treacherous terrain right on the border with Arunachal Pradesh. Now, Correct. they have built uh, transmission towers, they have built uh, mobile uh, towers, they have airstrips, airstrips that, uh, that are capable of dual use by the military as well as the civilian aircraft. Mr. Ranade, uh, do you think we are far behind? What are some of the things that we need to do? I think uh, what should be worrying us are two or three things. First is the transport infrastructure that they're building, mainly the airports and the road, uh, road network and the rail network. Now, we, uh, you are already aware of the Qinghai Lhasa railway line, which has been built. Right. They're building now one from Chengdu to Lhasa, which takes them al across the Arunachal border. Uh, from Lincher, Sona, up to Shigatse Vai Yatung, which is just across Sikkim, as you know. So uh, they're building that uh, rail network. They're building three new airports, which will be ready by the end of uh, next year, um, in Shigatse, in Loka, and in uh, Lincher. Yeah. So there'll be three more airports in addition to those that are already in mm -hmm. And they're building a road network. So these uh, are the things that they're doing on our side. We need to accelerate the development of airfields because I think that is an area that uh, will provide us a capacity for moving troops uh, up to the border very quickly right. and right. for taking care and removing the um, uh, you know, hostile infrastructure on the other side. Right. Uh, India has already, of course, uh, as you very rightly said, India has operationalized in the meantime seven advanced landing grounds. But, but next question to you, Mr. Ranade, is this. You have, of, of course, heard of the Shekatkar Committee report by Lieutenant General Shekatkar that has been discussed in yes. Parliament last year as well as several times uh, this year uh, as well. This is recommended, uh, you know, several bridges, several more bridges on the Brahmaputra, including the possibility of a tunnel beneath the Brahmaputra. So uh, do you think yeah. the government should uh, seriously consider some of these proposals? Yeah, certainly. The government needs to start looking at uh, uh, this kind of developmental infrastructure that Secret Committee recommended. But I think we need to uh, think out of the box. There are two points that I would like to mention to you, uh, and through your network, hopefully, it will go to the other quarters. One is that we must use the national resources that we have. I stress national resources that we have. We have a lot of private companies which are very competent and very capable, and they need to be brought in to building strategic infrastructure, which Absolutely. we are not doing. Absolutely. So I... I think that needs to be used and not just government infrastructure. And the second is instead of just roads, etc., let us think ahead. We must start using new technology in the, uh, terms of missiles, drones, etc. Those need to be brought into use also. Air Marshal Barbara, welcome to North East Live. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'm sure there have been, you know, uh, a massive infrastructure development uh, on the Indian side now. We have always been talking about the Chinese side, but now the Prime Minister on Tuesday had inaugurated a massive bridge across the Brahmaputra that has reduced, uh, you know, both time and distance to Arunachal Pradesh, then, of course, to the Chinese frontier. It will help the military establishment move men and materials. 
So how do you look at this development? Well, first and foremost, uh, finally, I think India is waking up to the need of infrastructure in the Northeast. And it's a good thing. It's not necessarily only for the defense purposes. It is more for the development of Northeast. Absolutely. And this Bogeyville Bridge, which is close to five kilometers, is definitely one of those infrastructure which we required both from the point of development and for the purposes of defense. Yeah, uh, it will enable definitely the movement of logistical items by road in case the weather, which in Northeast is unpredictable, faster, troops faster. But as far as infrastructure across the border goes, it has been moved for a very long, long time. Nothing, you can't hide anything in the days of high technology like satellite surveillance, etc. Absolutely, yes. Now, now the issue is, we have, like I said, in a recent development, say, in Doklam, where after the standoff, they have created massive infrastructure. Now, it is their territory. What they want to do there is up to them, because it is their perception. Similarly, yeah. in our perception, yeah. you must be also clear that if such infrastructure, like what is, say, Doklam, or in Inzi, I think the place, a field which is yeah. in Inzi, has come up, it is their perception and as far as I am concerned, or India should be concerned, yeah. is why so close, one, why where there is hardly any habitation, the second, and uh, is there any motive which we are not very clear about? Absolutely, this is a very important point you are raising, Air Marshal Barbara, that uh, you, have, you have mentioned the name, yes, with that name is very familiar to us now, it's Lindsay. Now the question is, why so close to the Indian border? Why uh, the township in, a, in an area that it absolutely has no habitation or had no habitation until the township came about? So, but uh, Air Marshal Barbara, uh, uh, basically, you know, it's a question of uh, air power at the same time, isn't it? Uh, because we have to depend on the advanced landing grounds, whereas the Chinese have made uh, proper aerodromes. Like, I, let me put it to you this way. After my landing in, when I was commanding Western Air Command, yeah. we reactivated Donald Bay Goldie. Yes. Which is the... And this is a 16,700 feet after 43 years of it lying. Rather, it's a very a sad state there. Now, after that, I was asked if I can open a few more. Right. And yes, we did. The Pukshi was thing, and we made a new one in Neomar. That was followed by the Prime Minister actually saying, why don't we develop all the ALGs and helipads in the Northeast? And uh, I had the good fortune of also being the chairman of the committee. Right. And today, today, believe you me, I think except for one, every ALG has been activated. Every helipad, helipad has been redone to very good standards, and most of them are now manned by Indian Air Force. Absolutely, okay. including we had the experience of in August of the Sukhoi landing in Pasighat ALG. Correct. But now, the thing is, all of these have been done up. But this has got a dual purpose, obviously. One is to encourage tourism, and Northeast is a fantastic place for tourism. Right. The second is looking after the local populace, which have to trek for a long, long time to reach Absolutely. across the so, And uh, thirdly, obviously, in the dual purpose of military movement. Right. Lastly, yeah. lastly, lastly, Air Marshal... Uh, I mean, no cause for worry. The, the, the Indian defense establishment is very well equipped to deal with any eventuality. Let me put it this way. Now, in the East, we have almost the latest of the fighter aircraft. Right. We are moving in the latest of the transport aircraft and strategic left aircraft. And uh, the Gamfan will also, I understand, be based in the Northeast. So this gives us a very big punch, if required to be given. Now, INZI, say, for that matter, INZI, or for that matter, Doklam, for that matter. I'm not saying that we're going to work tomorrow. We are so close to the border, if the Indian army locates his artillery in a proper manner, which I'm sure they're thinking of and doing it also, maybe, or, or may have already done it. 
we can take on these targets even with a year artillery absolutely so it, yeah. it, it is at that close that the indian artillery can reach them so uh, yeah. anyway anyway uh, uh, air marshal barbara i think uh, we are very well prepared and uh, we have come a long way from 1962 uh, on that note thank you very much indeed for speaking to me in on naughty slide